Rated T14. Does young people even need a voice in this community? What can the community expect from this show? I am my brother's keeper. We got to be responsible for each other. It's okay to be different. Building stronger communities by helping the rest of our community really make it and achieve their dreams. Ladies and gentlemen, let's go! Hey. Hey, you. Yeah, you. You on the other side of the screen. Do you want to be heard? Do you want to help your community? Do you want to make a difference? then you should join the conversation and be a part of We Sound Off. Here we talk about topics that are relevant to the community. Log on to www.wesoundoff.com. Send us your name, age, school, and become a team member of We Sound Off. So remember, just like I, Deontra Campbell, Tanisha, Jonica, Michelle can sound off. You can sound off too. Good morning, Ori and Georgetown Counties. Once again, you're listening to Sound Off, heard weekly on your favorite radio station. And uh, it is our goal at Sound Off to deal with topics that are relevant to our young people. And on this morning, we have a very special edition of Sound Off. It's called Ask Law Enforcement. And uh, we're very honored to have with us in the studios uh, Corporal Tyrese Knox Neesmith. And she's with the City of Conway Police Department. Good morning, uh, Corporal Neesmith. Good morning. Once again, good morning. You still got your energy on. You doing okay? Good. Well, you're doing a really good job. Very knowledgeable, and that's the reason why we wanted to do uh, do this show. Of course, summer will be here soon. We just had spring break. We Woo! had Easter holiday season, and uh, it's a lot that will be going on, so we felt that it was necessary to do this particular show. Okay, at this time, uh, we're going straight to the phone lines. Again, the number, if you want to call in, is 843-465-0924. Good morning, caller. You're on the air. Good morning, sir. How are you? I'm doing fine. Okay, and who am I speaking to? You speaking to Jaquan. Okay, Jaquan, what do you have for us? I got a question about if you were parked in a handicap spot and wasn't a handicap, what would happen? Oh, that's good. That's a very good question. Um, I come across this a lot myself and pretty much any other law officer, but if you're found in a handicapped parking space, you can be charged anywhere from 200 to $1,100. Wow. 1100 being the max. Um, you can also, the car can be towed. I think a lot of people don't understand, and I'm actually happy you asked that question. If you're anyone who's issued a handicap placard, it is told to them they must be in the car. So just because there's a placard, does not mean that I can take grandma's car with her placard and not go park in front of Walmart or any other store. Um, I actually have to stop a lot of people, adults and young people, to find out who exactly is handicapped. Right. The new um, handicapped placards will start coming. They're already out. I'm pretty sure you've seen people with their faces on them. Mm -hmm. That way you can't face, oh, this is mine. It has a face on it. They will be issued only one. They won't have multiple as they do now. So you will know who's supposed to be in there. But the most important thing is a lot of people, for whatever reason, do not understand that that person has to be in that car at that time. If they are not in the car, just because you have a placard, you will be issued a citation. And you have to come to court. In certain situations, the car can also be towed. Wow. So, you know, just don't park in the spots. Those people, as I say, have earned that right to right. be there. And that's actually a right they really don't want. I'm that's pretty right. sure they would love to park in a regular spot and just walk. But, you know, we do have some inconsiderate people that will park there. I actually had a couple do it because they um, were returning some dog food, and that was a reason. Wow. And it was spots <laughs> open everywhere. It was late at night. I'm like, wow. So, and, you know, and all the spots were taken, and there was a lady trying to get in the spot. And, you know, so just you can be charged uh, a hefty fine, and the car can be towed. Did that answer uh, which, is that what you wanted to know, sir? Okay. All right. We certainly appreciate you calling in. All right. You have a wonderful day. You too. All right. Bye bye. Okay. That's that's what I'm talking about. Fifteen hundred dollars. So just Let because it. you're tired, tired don't qualify you for handicap. Exactly. Doesn't? Wow. That's a lot of money. Fifteen hundred dollars. My goodness. What did you have, Michelle? I wanted to like kind of piggyback off of it. Does the same thing about parking in a handicap? You're not handicapped apply to like the fire lane like when you go to different mm. stores and they had a little yellow strips on the ground and people be trying to drop people off but they be parking there also does the same thing apply same thing does apply parking in the fire lane is now that's a city ordinance it's not a state law handicap is a state um statute city ordinances are what basic municipalities which like city of conway city of myrtle beach city of you know georgetown mm -hmm. they have their own set of laws and that's what that would fall under um in the city limits of conway it's going to net you a 30 dollar ticket um and it 
has some instructions on it. If you don't pay attention to those instructions, you have a 48 hour window to pay that ticket. If not, it doubles wow. and it keeps increasing mm -hmm. until you go pay it. But um, yes, you do get fined for parking in fire lanes. Parking on those ye those yellow lines also goes with handicap. Those lines are not a spot to park on. It doesn't fall into the null and void. Right. What those lines are for is people who have a handicap, like a van, and they have to let that ramp out. Mm -hmm. That's that space for the ramp. Oh, for some reason, gotcha. people will, oh, it, oop, it's a free spot. That's not a spot. That's not a, a, a you know a, a vortex. Like this, don't fall under any rules. That is what that is for. That is a violation that's called parking out of a marked space. A marked space, as we all know as drivers, got to have two lines on each side of you. If you don't have two lines and you got more lines, you are in violation. So you will be cited. And um, now if the fire marshal catches you, he can charge you a $200 ticket. So you don't want to get you know, caught in a fire lane. Those are for fire truck departments only. They're not for you to drop your grandma or your auntie or your mom off so they can get out quicker. Um, some places have designated spots for that. Um, at Walmart, those areas where those blue poles are, that's what that's right. for, not the fire lane. Okay. And I know this probably has nothing to do with that, but often uh, you, I hear people talk about jaywalking. Let's talk about that. What is jaywalking? Y'all heard that before? I mean, yeah, yeah, I know. Heard it on TV. Yeah, I know. I know. I know. Okay, so let's talk about jaywalking. Oh. There is no jaywalking in South Carolina. It's not. There's See? not a jaywalking. Did y'all know that? Man, people have been, Did y'all know that? A police officer scared me about it. He was like, I'm going I'm to write you a ticket for jaywalking. I was like, for real? He was like, but I'm explain exactly right what now, if they, if you were Now, if they have a city ordinance for that, like I said, every city has their own ordinances. Those are laws that they can pull forth. Now, in Conway, we don't have a jaywalking. Now, I mean, you can they can write you for pedestrian in the roadway if you're ah. just in the roadway for no apparent reason obstructing traffic you can be there is a pedestrian in the roadway statute that they can charge you with that's why right. i haven't been in trouble all right I was so y'all know i mean just to put it out there everybody know that if you go to conway high you walk in that street to go to taco bell to eat something so you're telling me that i can walk across that street and there's no jaywalking fine for me no you're crossing the road now it is, it is better for you to use the crosswalk because when I'm there, I would prefer all of y'all to come across or any law enforcement were there to stop traffic for your purpose. A lot of kids, for whatever reason, will go all the way down the street and right. down there, I can't control traffic back there. So at least if you're where I am or where the officer is, we can control the traffic. We've stopped everything and the likelihood that you will, won't get hit or bumped or hit with a side mirror is very slim to none because some people just don't like people on the road. Right. So, you know, we, we, I try to wave people, hey, come this way, that way I can get you across, you're across safely, and you can go to Taco Bell, what you want to do. Once again, uh, Orion Georgetown Counties, this is a special edition of Sound Off. It's called Ask Law Enforcement. And you, the public, you can call in and we will give you the opportunity to ask our very special guest, Corporal Tyrese no Neesmith, our very special guest, Corporal Tyrese Knox Neesmith, who's with the uh, City of Conway Police Department. And I'm going now to the phone lines. Uh, good morning, caller. You're on the air. Hi. Good morning, sir. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm doing well. And, and who are we speaking to? Uh, James. Okay. What did you have for Corporal Neesmith? Um, can you explain the meaning of guilty by association? That's good. Guilty by association basically refers to people who tend to hang with people of the criminal element, if that makes sense. Um, for example, if you're always in a place that has a lot of crime going on, you're always at these scenes, you're always in the car with the people who have criminal records, basically you're making yourself almost, I wouldn't say a target, but we're starting to pay you maybe a little bit more attention if every time we go to a scene, you're always there. I actually have a little, one of these little boys, he, for whatever reason, he loves to hang out with all the bad ones. Wow. And he's actually, you know, not a bad one, but he's in the car with, you know, everyone, every time a, a shooting happened, he's there. Wow. You know, so yeah, it, it, he, it takes a lot, of bit, a lot of your credibility away, whereas, you know, you have one child that's never with anybody, and this one is always with, you know, the bat. You're always at the drug house. You're always in the drug cars. Anytime something happens, you're there. You're kind of being lumped in with everyone else. Is, is that similar to, um, and I know James is asking, but James, I, I, I'm thinking, is that similar to if um, James is with three guys and James is not really guilty, but they actually went in the store and they stole, but James is hanging with them, would that be considered the same thing? 
Yes. Okay. If if he's present, then he will be charged the same charge that they get. If if there's a if he commits a crime, um, such as shoplifting, if he's there, they're only stealing, but he's not, but he knows and aware and he's right there. Wow. He can be charged right along with them and there's not an accessory, he will be charged with shoplifting. Okay. James uh or the burglary. We had some little boys, they did that. They broke in the house. He's like, Well, I was just there. He was with them with all the stolen stuff. He got charged. Wow, that is good to know that. James uh did did Corporal Neesmith Answer what you needed to know. Oh, yeah, sure thing. Um, I guess I need to watch who I pick my friends as. Watch the company you keep. That's right. That's what I always go by. Okay, Mr. James Huggins, we certainly appreciate you calling in. And um, have a wonderful day, sir. Mercedes, uh, what did you have for Corporal Neesmith? Well, my question is a little different. I just wanted to know, like, during the, I guess you would say the holiday seasons and more of, like, Good Fridays and Black Friday and stuff like that, you know, when those things are going on, do you, would you say that the police are more, like, attentive um, during those type of things because that's like where more crimes happen? We are. Um, usually most of your departments will have some form of a of an action, a, a plan basically. You know, we already know like Black Friday there are going to be a lot of shoppers. So yeah, we try to assist all of our um, shopping areas with having a police patrol. Same thing, you know, with Myrtle Beach. They know these events are coming up. They always increase patrols. Um, so we try to, to work hand in hand right. with the community, with shop owners, to try to make sure we can try to keep the peace or do, be of assistance in any way that we can. Okay. All right. What did you have, Jonica? All right. So I know this is kind of, you know, kind of staring away from the whole holiday thing. But um, I'm going to be trying for my permit. And I would like to know, because I've heard that, as long as the people in the front seat have their seatbelt on, you can't stop us if someone in the back doesn't have their seatbelt on. Is that true? That is incorrect. <laughs> that's that, that, why we that, have Corporal Neesmith in the studio. That's almost like with the seatbelt. If your child's in the back seat without a seat jumping on back, I'm going to stop you. Same thing. Um, as long as if anyone who's under 17 that possesses a license, um, what happened is I can stop the car or any law enforcement officer can stop the car. However, only that person with the license, like, for instance, if you're 17 and you have a driver's license, I'm gonna give you the ticket. The driver won't get the citation. Um, but if there are children or an unlicensed person that's under 17, then the driver is responsible for everyone in that car. So like, you know, mm -hmm. if you're driving around with someone else's children or even your, your little sister or brother and you're, a, you're in control of them, you're gonna be cited and you'll be charged under the child restraint law, which is $150 per child. So it's kind of like if it's like having a minor. I'm responsible for you You're until you grow up. Until you get a license. When you get a license, then they can get their own ticket. Okay. Okay. Wow, that's really interesting. I'm glad you said that because a lot of people probably had no clue about that. Right. Okay. And I understand we have another caller. We're going to go to the phone lines. Uh, good morning, caller. You're on the air. Oh, yes. Hey, um, I was wondering, like, I had a question, and it's like, I heard that it was legal to smoke marijuana, but it's just illegal to possess is that true? <laughs> yeah. Okay, you're getting into two wow. different subject matters with federal charges. That's a whole different, that's kind of what you're going on because federal has their own type of charges then on the state level. Um, if you, it, right now in the state of South Carolina is what I'll talk about is right. it is illegal to possess marijuana. We have not, South Carolina has not advanced to make anything legal. So whether you, I only smoked it, I don't have it no more, you know. Yeah, now, if you're in possession of it, you're going to be charged with it. Now, okay, it, you know. Right. Like, wait, wait. No, what I was going to get, what you're referring to is like California, some of these other ones where they're allowing them to grow it and they have certain stipulations on what they can have and how can it, we, that doesn't apply to South Carolina and they have a whole bunch of laws that I couldn't even begin to start with. But here in South Carolina, it is illegal to possess marijuana. Okay. 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 So you get, all right, you get, she answered what you needed then. Okay. All right, Devin, we appreciate you calling in, buddy. Thank you. Have a really wonderful day. All right, you right bye-bye. Okay, right, you bye. know what? Corporal Neesmith, we will have to do a like, part two. And, and Ask law enforcement, because obviously it's a lot of people in the general public that just don't know, but now you know. So this is a good opportunity, so we'll do it again. But we never, ever allow um, anyone to leave Sound Off without doing shout-outs. So before we let you do your shout-out, we'd like to say thank you so much. Sound Off crew, can we give it up for Corporal <laughs> Tyrese Knox-Neesmith? 
with the uh, City of Conway Police Department. Big shout out to the City of Conway Police Department. Do such a wonderful job. Make us feel so safe. So on that note, who would you like to shout out to? I would like to give a shout out to my lovely children, not you, Devin. Okay, start over. He was still on the air. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Um, I would just like to give a shout out to my three children and my loving family. <laughs> okay. All right, go ahead, Jonathan. <sighs> my little sister. Hey, go ahead, Jonathan. Go, y'all do shout outs. Where do I go? I would like to shout out to my father and my mother, Stephen Napal Brown, and my older brother, Jonathan Brown, and my big sister, Michelle. I'd like to give a shout out to God for which we would all not be here. Shout out to my parents, Tina and David Devery, and shout out to the class of 2012. We had a great prom, you guys. <laughs> I'd like to shout out my mom and dad, um, Lawrence Johnson and Jacqueline Johnson. Thank y'all for supporting me. And as always, we'd like to give a very special shout out to this very fine radio station. I have to do a very special shout out to Bucksport. I think I made some people mad last week. So Bucksport, Bucksville, also Finkley. Good morning to you. And as always, my very special family in Georgetown. God bless you. Love you. And until next week, we sound off and you can sound off too. Sound, sound, sound off. off. We invite you to join this conversation. All you have to do is simply log on to www.wesoundoff.com and you can be a part of this discussion. Sound, sound, sound off. off. Rated T14.